Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Impact. This is theCUBE's special presentation at IBM Insight, inside the digital experience, IBM Insight Go, social media lounge. Uh, the social media gurus are here, John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Um, that's playing off the joke we were just sharing on Twitter, but seriously, we're here. Expecting to see them from the noise, my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Marsha Collier, who's the Managing Director of Impact Ingenuity at Marsha, Marsha. Yes. That's your Twitter handle, it's awesome. It is, Marsha Connor, actually. Welcome back, yeah. welcome back. Uh, well, thanks, thrilled to be here. So we're just joking about Halloween and we're going to be a social media guru. It's a little bit of a meme going around the internet. I mean, there is no social media guru. I mean, you can't really be a guru with developing technology. You can be a practitioner. I mean, I mean, guru, what is a social media? What is a social media guru? And this, this is where, because I, I offered that I would answer any question you ask me, you can ask me those things, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the problem. I think that's why it'd be a fabulous Halloween costume. I'm going to think about doing that one too, uh, because people seem to be, you know, bowing to these folks, of following them to the ends of the earth because of something that they said on social media. I mean, that, that's a kind of a scary concept. Hey, it's a chance to use your Google Glass. <laughs> you, you know, I can be a break glass that out as well. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Okay. Um, but but let's talk, let's go in into that that theme. I mean, honestly. You know, Jeff Jonas was just on, he's awesome. We always get in the weeds, he's a fun character yeah. to talk to. But he's super smart, we're on this G2 thing, observation space. But we're all internet of things, right? I mean, it reminds me of that book I used to read to my kids, Thing One and Thing Two. You know, we're all things, we're all internet of things. So what do you see as that impact to uh, this digital transformation where not only are the humans connected to the machines, the data mm -hmm. that they're exhausting or sharing or streaming, mm -hmm. but the machines are connected and collecting as well. How's that going to change? What's your view on all this? While I have been in the technology sector most of my, uh, most of my life, uh, and I appreciate and enjoy the technology, I never lose sight of the fact that this is about the people. It's about us actually working together, of actually learning together, doing whatever the hell it is we're needing to do. So if all of my appliances are actually then taking care of the mundane, if my, uh, water softener system is actually getting the, the water put in and it's getting delivered on the right day, you know, all, all the better. If, uh, if the toaster is uh, alerting me to some sort of news, I'm thrilled. I, I love the idea of the technology actually being able to take care of all that stuff that we never wanted to do in the first place. But the technology's been so lousy over the last couple of years, actually forever, uh, that we've had to do this stuff because the technology isn't doing it for us. What's your observation out in the customer space? Because that's, you know, that's more of the home example, but even business now, it seems to be early innings. I mean, people are kicking the tires. You know, we talk to all the gurus coming up here who are in the tech side, IBM and customers, and the reality is oh, we're all pro data, which we all kind of see that obvious that social data and you know, big data analytics certainly helpful, but this transformation, people are now really changing how to operate, operationalize their business with it. It's a huge daunting task and it's scary. Um, some people are like, whoa, I don't want to do it, or hey, I'm jumping in, I'm cool. Is there a cool factor? Is there a scared factor? What's your, what's your observation from, in, from out and talking to everyone out in the, in the marketplace? Well, first, I would, I'll totally bash the, the idea that this is only a consumer play or that it doesn't apply to businesses. Think of all the, uh, the mundane and ridiculous things that we have to do at work because they're not being taken care of us you know, taken care of for us by our desks, if you want to look at it that way, or our computers. I, I loved uh, hearing about the, the new uh, uh, pairing of uh, Wayblazer and you know, Watson, and the idea of, of the travel being taken care of us. What we discover because of the data that we're putting off each and every moment is there are systems around us all the time that actually know our preferences, know how we would be handling this, but yet they don't do anything about it. So the idea that we can actually move forward in that way should be just as applicable to our business. Uh, you know, a manager should not have to actually be asking some of the questions that they are asking. The HR department doesn't need to be asking how you are doing. It's evident by all the things that you put out into the world. And by just actually attending to what's going on, I, 
we have a huge opportunity to get back all that time that we've been wasting all these years on just the stupid yeah, just stuff. To, what's, so what's the bottleneck? To fear, security, oh, we want privacy. Marsha will get offended if we tweet or she knows that we know that mm -hmm. she tweeted that. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a concern people have, it seems to be. Is it, is it or? It, well, we'll go back up. But why is it a concern? It's because the people who've been doing it early are doing it Horribly. I mean, they're doing it in not respectful ways. There isn't actually a, a, a real thought about how would I be okay with this doing. And, and those are we're so ahead of the curve. Maybe because of the, the guru status of some of these social media. Maybe that. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> and the big data gurus. Look at the government. They were big data gurus, and they screwed up that that whole Snowden thing. Was all like, hey, just ask us. We'll give you our email mm. address. You can search my email. Have a nice day. Search it's, a, it's a very Make different me message. It's a very different conversation. It's a very different question. It, it's a very different level of respect that we have from one person working with another, of actually talking with people as opposed to at them, uh, and, instead of just making assumptions of actually participating. I mean, the idea that engagement is the goal just implies that we haven't been engaged all these years. We haven't been thinking. We haven't been doing. I haven't met. I personally haven't met a, a really dumb person, you know, in years, and yet everything I. I do uh, would imply that we're we're too stupid to be able to really think and act and and, and be thoughtful about our approach. So you're an influencer. Um, you're out here Sometimes. in the digital sphere, and you are you're you're an influencer. Um, I mean, <laughs> wherever you define influence, yeah, I guess yeah, sure. I guess if they say so, you sure. Yes, if, I am. If you are a VIP influencer, we'll <laughs> okay. go with that. Um, I'm just digging on your Twitter okay. stream here. Okay, it's well, so fantastic. Glad to hear it. So you know, what are you really working on? Stuff. So share this. La you know, mm -hmm. we'd love we'd love to hear your, your stories because you last year you were mm -hmm. awesome on theCUBE. Mm -hmm. We'd love love chatting with you. Give us the update. What's mm -hmm. going on? We saw you, we saw yeah. each other at TED at IBM conference. We did. Uh, you're super busy. Um, mm -hmm. What's going on? Share with the folks out this one things you've been you've been into, what your what's working, show some you know, show some stuff that didn't work. What's going on? What's out what are you doing? What are you working on? All right, John, if you're gonna ask, I'm gonna tell you. Tell us. Yeah. If you're really if you're really ready. It dawned to me um, probably a little after I saw you last time, after I was visiting here, that uh, our world's falling apart. And uh, if all of us actually don't get on that. If we don't actually start figuring out how to use the precious time we have, the, the precious money we have, the, the roles we have in our organizations, the resources at our yeah. disposal, our brains, for good, not evil, I'm not so sure about the world that my son is going to be inheriting, for example. And uh, I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I realize I, I know a heck of a lot in the world. I have a lot of skills. Everybody I know, look at these people around me, have tremendous skills. And instead of us just sort of churning out the butter one more year, uh, we best, I love that phrase. You know, we, we best be thinking about yeah. what can I do given what I have of my time, or my resources, or my skills, or whatever that is, and apply that to what I have influence over and be able to make as much difference as and possible. Are we talking about God's last offer here, the sustainable world, or what's? I, I, and actually, on all, on all scopes. Well, you know, the, time, the, the timing's perfect, too, if you think about it. Now, I have no, four. Seriously, what, uh, what, I, what are we talking about? The, the deterioration of our planet, we're talking about what are we talking about? Social the world going to hell in a handbasket? I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I'm. I, well, I mean, I can go on and, and no, talk about. No, I just want to clarify money, the money return. I, I can. I can. Enter, you know, entertain for but hours. But the comment that you just made. The comment I made is that no matter where we look, the the scientists have pointed out that we're past the point of no return with you know our climate. We uh, we look at the. Uh, the deterioration of the planet around us. I happen to live in the woods, and I mean deep in the woods. And I, you can uh, you can see the change of how much rain is coming down. That didn't. I mean, I, I'm not. I, my intent here is not to talk about all the, the the problems around us. We all actually feel them, even if we're not acknowledging them. What I see is the wasted opportunity of us not actually re-examining what we're choosing to do and figure out how whatever it is we're capable of doing could actually be helping instead of bringing down that world So faster. how should people... Yeah, people, you let, asked, you know, I'm gonna Let's say go people want to, so. no, that's good, but I just wanted to yeah. frame it. Yeah, no, so please, let's say people want to, so let's say that resonates to somebody in the mm -hmm. audience. Yeah. What should they do? How should, how should they start? Mm -hmm. Pick a passion and... They have them. I mean, my, my approach to all the change work I do and have been doing with corporations for the last 20 years is actually not additive. It's not asking the question, what more could I do? Mm -hmm. Because that's usually what keeps people from doing it. I ask the question, what's keeping me from doing what I've always known needed to be done? So in, you know, in our communities, 
you know, I, my experience is that everybody knows who it is that could use some assistance. Not in a handout sort of way, in a reaching out and caring way of asking, of, of having a conversation, of participating. And to be able to step back and ask that question, what's keeping me from doing that? We know what needs to be done, but we're not doing it. So how can I say, oh, well, what's keeping me from doing it is I don't have enough time to do it. Okay, well, what can I do to actually just get a little bit more time to do something that matters in the world? So that, that's at the most very, very less Twitter? basic level. It could be. Right, it put could down the phone. It could be that it's, it, it's less Twitter. It, it could also be a reevaluating how much time I'm spending at work on stuff that could be automated. I mean, going back to this whole conversation about automation, it is to ask those questions what I could do. That's just about time. Uh, I, I yeah, but that is one of the biggest absolutely. objections, oh, right? I don't have time, yeah. right? Yeah, so what I find is when I talk about uh, global health, actually, is that when we look at the idea of health, not as in just exercising more or just eating right, we're talking about fiscal health. We're talking about uh, creating a world that is just a, a, a healthier place. When I ask people those questions, most of them can say, well, yeah, this is, an, this is important to me, but I don't know what to do about it. So one is, as you absolutely said, is finding, finding those passions and be able to figure out what you were going to do. But more importantly, to ask yourself that question, when am I going to do this, if not now? I feel like I'm, I'm falling my, my uh, my mic is falling up. Let me let me get that addressed. Well, so let me chit chat. I have a lot of hair. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, okay. So we're talking about different ways to find time. Um, well, Dave, I mean, I think it's a great time. I mean, the passional thing, passion thing is where the key word is contributing, right? Yeah. So, like, I think it's a good time because I have we I we both Dave and I both have four kids, so we see the new generation, their mindset. And we don't have time because we're driving around. No, but everywhere. they're they're impressionable right now. As the old expression is, you grab the yeah. play doh and you can shape it. You can we can actually as as leaders and mature experienced people mm -hmm. that have some skills in computing, we can influence like STEM, we can influence women in tech, we can influence computer science curriculums, sure. we can influence modern society because the new generation is coming in and they're natives, they're adopting, and they're thirsty for leadership. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they're seeing it, so I think mm -hmm. there's really a good time. You're seeing the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. the crowdsourcing stuff is really becoming mm -hmm. a part of this new tribe. So, I believe the gravity around making things that happen mm. is participation, collaboration, mm. and data. Mm. Data is knowledge, endorsement, social proof. These are concepts that are easily transferable if you can just if you just wake up and do it. So I think, you know, um, it, if you just wake up and do it. I mean, with the, if I you mean, think about it, so why why if, if you wake up every day, why aren't you doing it today? We have Craig Brown on earlier. He's doing twenty five thousand dollar investments for kids mm. to start companies. You know. You know, whether inner city kids and or that was a pretty cool segment. I mean, so you know, this is this is the democratization piece, but in a connected network, it's frictionless communication. I mean, hell, Twitter overthrew governments, so you can have solidarity, peaceful solidarity, as well mm. as mm. other rev revolutions. Yeah. So I think that's a, a very doable thing versus just checking the box. Oh, I volunteered to do something. No. And I think that has been more yeah. of like a Peace Corps arm about it. I helped people. Come on. Uh, and I'm personally, I ask this question of everybody that I, t I, I ask, actually ask two questions of everybody I work with now. Uh, one of them is, what can you not do? What can you not not do actually? So if you, if you think to yourself, if I look back on my life, if I look back on my life, what is it that I thought to myself, oh, I didn't have time for that, or I couldn't do it. You, we've all heard that, you know, what do you want on your tombstone, however that works. But I find that everybody I know think it has a burning need to be doing something useful in their lives. A it's purpose. not just mission driven, it, absolutely, it's a purpose. Yeah. It's a connecting with, the, with, connecting with people who are helping to move the world forward. And I just stop and I say, even in a business context, I say, you know, now's time. We're kind of out of time. Get on with it, please, yeah, yeah. The please, please, ticking. please. Well, so. Jeff Jones was talking about the asteroid thing to geospace, it's more geeky conversation, but the key thing out of that was better focus of finite resources, and that really comes down to the fundamental better decision making. I mean, we, my wife says to our kids, oh, make better decisions. I mean, that's a mother talking to the kids, but that's yeah. our life now. So like, if we can make better decisions, that ultimately mm -hmm. is the big data opportunity yeah. from social change to play to business. And then the second question, absolutely, yeah. absolutely agree with everything you said. I, my, the next big question I ask is, what are you doing to improve the world? Now, I would say 50% of the people I say just give me this completely deer in the headlights look. What do you mean to, to save the world, or, you know, to improve the world, to change the world, however you want to frame that. But I haven't met anybody in 
years that isn't interested in truly contributing, leaving the world a better place than they came into. And that's no matter what their, their demographic makeup is, that's no matter the community they live in, no matter what they're doing, people have a fundamental desire to do better. And so I ask that of every business person, every corporation I work with. And I mean, that, that's one of the things I, I love about this whole idea of you know, building a smarter planet. That should tie yeah. to every single thing we do. And, and when we lose sight of that, we see what happens. You know, I think this is a really great conversation to have because it's it's something that's emerging and you know again, there's some obvious examples, oh Pebble Watch, crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. But if you look at really impactful things like open source software, mm -hmm. you are seeing the playbook. I mean, the playbook mm -hmm. is, you know, people can participate at any level. So the, the the fear of quote getting this kind of group going is that mm -hmm. ah, I'm too busy or ah, you know, I'm too you can the contribution doesn't have to be game changing for an individual, could be one small piece of the puzzle, could be small contribution, mm -hmm. someone might do more heavy lifting than the other. That's an open source concept, we've seen that work huge. Mm -hmm. A lot of leverage, mm -hmm. a lot of participation, um, so I think that's something that I really haven't seen get applied to at a large scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. you see the protests in yeah. Hong Kong are interesting, that's an indicator, what does that mean? Right? So, mm -hmm. what's your take on all, what do you think needs to happen to get more people tied into these shared Missions, uh, more crowd uh, chats, a little, more, little, little, more, more off the ranch, a little bit more honesty. More honesty, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not, not something that we talk about these sorts of events. It, is that I, I, I've gotten to the point where I, I do these large, you know, talks in front of <laughs> thousands of people, and I ask everybody to turn to the person next to them and introduce themselves honestly. Like, why are you here, and why do you care? We've all gotten so wrapped up in the who we Hi, are. Hi, I'm John Furrier, I'm a Cubaholic. And, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, that's why I, say I love the idea of you being a social media guru for Halloween. It's, that it's just become so, it's so about the role that we've lost the connection yeah. with our humanity. Yeah. And so I just, I ask yeah. people just to step back. So it's a simple, yeah. so yeah, I'm all for the large initiatives. Being self-aware is a really interesting concept and that really what you're talking about mm -hmm. here is, I mean, I make fun of myself. I, I mean, I put mm -hmm. that out there, probably going to get some hate mail for that tweet, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm making yeah. fun of myself and us because we have to, because it's really not moving fast enough in the right, in my mind, at least. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think social media is a real, real game changer. I'm pro, pro social media, but I mean, mm -hmm. come on. If you can't make fun of yourself, then but what does social media do? I mean, what is our untapped desire that why we're all participating in social media? We're mi we've missed the opportunity for all these years to be human in everything that we're doing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the idea that you can be, you know, wherever you are and be able to reach the people who have answers to be able to help you make better decisions is something that we've had that desire for a very long time. We've yeah. just been yeah. not able to do that for so long that it's now it's time we get on with that. You know, so we do, why we do the Cube too, Dave and I talk all the time, we, we want to broadcast out the data because yeah. I think people want to be part of something, and I think at the end of the day, it's human psychology, is that being part of something makes psychology of the soul work better. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I want to be part of a group, I want to belong, mm -hmm. it's a yearning, it's a tribe, whatever that kind of collective group is, whether you know, the clown or you're the, you're the guru or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, people are yearning for that collectiveness of, of group groups, and I think the data ga is the gravity, like how do you, a joke, it could be uh, you know, serious conversation, it could be something provocative, I think content is a, a nice, piece of gravity to kind of bring people together versus you know tweeting, hey look how big I am, I got a zillion followers. Okay, so let's back up though, so content. So we can talk about the, 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 the concept that is content, that's a lovely thing to do at a data conference, talk about the content. It's about things we care about. That's yeah. what content is. Yeah. So if we take that a step further and we actually extrapolate it and say, how does this impact me? It's not because it's content, it's because we're talking about topics that matter to each of us. Yeah. Yes. And so the more we get back to that sort of conversation, the more we get back to that sort of point, I think we have a bigger opportunity to have conversations that matter and not to be able to be you know, wasting our time doing the silly stuff. So. Okay, we're getting the hook here, yeah, Marsha. Conversations that matter, that's really what it's all about, changing mm -hmm. the world. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE, great to see you again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be right back after this short break, live in Las Vegas. Day two continues, wall-to-wall -wall coverage here inside theCUBE, inside the digital experience, InsightGo with IBM Social Lounge. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>